Alright, what's going on guys? Sun Devil Drake here for some Destiny 2, and Curse of Osiris is live. As of December 5th, this past Tuesday, uh, Curse of Osiris dropped, <clears throat> and as you can see, there are already some notable differences just from, you know, this screen right here. So, my Warlock 303, you know, standard, level 20, Titan 304, level 20, but the level cap has been raised, and so has the light level. So my Hunter, as you can see here, is level 25, and currently light level, or power level, I should say, 312. <clears throat> the new max is 330, 335 with mods, and you can see that I've got some different armor pieces on, on my Hunter since the last time you saw them. So we're going to be using the Hunter for uh, whatever Crucible match we jump into, but I did want to touch on some of the Curse of Osiris content real quick. Trials of the Nine, I know. Ah, Eater of Worlds is now live too. Okay, so that is part of it. Um, the new raid activity, it's the raid lair, so if you go and check out the Leviathan, um, I'm assuming, yeah, looks like you can either do the standard raid, the Leviathan, or Eater of Worlds. So that is all in the underbelly of the giant ship. Uh, there's supposed to be, I, I think I only heard there, there's just one boss, which is kind of a bummer, but I have not personally watched any content on what this whole raid entails. Um, it'll probably be a little while before I attempt it myself. And then this just piqued my interest seeing that. There's no way that they won't be filling that with something. So that's interesting. <clears throat> so that's that's the main thing. New raid. New raid is out. But also Mercury is here. Uh, unfortunately Mercury is not very big. This is Mercury. It's pretty tiny. You come in right here by Brother Vance. You've got... Um, you know, just the one landing zone, and there's not much here. For the most part, Mercury was just kind of a uh, a way to get to the next mission. Honestly, um, I still haven't gotten these chests. Haven't tried the Lost Sector yet, but I have done the uh, public event that takes place right here in the center, and that's actually a pretty fun event. Um, I've done both the heroic and standard version. Uh, definitely, you know, if you're interested, check out what it is and uh, how to unlock the heroic event portion of it because I didn't know at first it's, it's not obvious so um, still have some adventures to do once you do this one then it'll give you more adventures but I have not done that one yet but this is mercury it's uh, pretty small and honestly a little bit disappointing but there you have it what else is new so I mean I have that uh, adventure for Mercury. Obviously there was the campaign. The campaign lasted about five hours for me. I, I Probably about four because I also in that five hour stint completed my flashpoint. So it was about a four hour campaign. Definitely not too long. Um, a bit underwhelming but cool in general I would say. You know it, it was interesting but it wasn't impacting. You know what I mean? Osiris didn't have a very big part in it. Uh, it was just you and his ghost Sagira you know, knocking stuff out. So on top of that, there is the Infinite Forest. By the way, this is called the Lighthouse. Yeah. So that's the Lighthouse, the new zone. Um, the Infinite Forest is a, you know, randomly generated, you know, Lego piece style, you know, stepping stone from one platform to another, fighting off different enemies. But again, it, it wasn't used to its potential. They could have done a lot more um, as far as the infant forest, you know, make it a patrol zone, you know, do something else cool there. There could have been a lot of neat things like taking ideas from Diablo um, and other, you know, loot RPG games. Could have done a lot with it. So I really hope that they look at that in the future. But as a concept, it is neat. Uh, moving on to character stuff. <clears throat> Let's see, there are some new weapons. As you can see, I've got positive outlook here. All Curse of Osiris items have that uh, little eyeball icon. This weapon though, this is one that you get for completing story missions. Uh, once you get that option, you know, you get also a hand cannon or a scout rifle you can pick from. Definitely go with Positive Outlook if you like auto rifles at all. It's pretty nice. Got It has a kill clip, so after you get a kill and reload, then the next clip does increase damage for a little bit. You know, really good for PvE. Um, haven't used it in PvP yet, but you know, kill clip, it can't, can't be bad. Decided to change the sights just a little bit, but, you know, it's a cool gun. They have others, obviously, you know, 
plenty of other stuff that I have and have not found. There's a lot out there. This is another item. So the Took Offense. This was in the base game, but part of the new thing that they're doing is giving ornaments. So it actually gives you a reason to do certain events. So for example, this one, you need to do Heroic Strikes. If you complete 25 Heroic Strikes, then it looks like that, which personally I think is way cooler. I definitely like that. So I've done four Heroic Strikes towards getting that unlocked. Once I do, that'll definitely be equipped. I think it's pretty neat. Here's a uh, new Hunter Hood, new cloak. It's got some kind of feathery, tattered style, scaly thing going on. I think it's pretty sweet looking. Um, that is the only Osiris armor piece I have at the moment. Uh, looks like actually I have these gauntlets. I can go ahead and throw them on just to preview. And then this whole thing with uh, Aeon. <clears throat> Other allies receive a fraction of the shared energy. Nearby Aeon cult allies. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I haven't looked into it yet. I don't know if maybe they need to be wearing Aeon armor or if it's just, you know, the people in your fire team, which would make the most sense, but I am not sure. And then I also got this <clears throat> Graviton forfeit. Increases duration of any invisibility effects. Melee abilities charge faster when you are invisible. Pretty cool. Definitely a nifty thing. Really spooky. But for uh, my standard PvP loadout, this is what I roll still. Orpheus rig with uh, that took offense. Uh, helmet there. But yeah, so I haven't gotten a weapon that has masterworks yet. I have not seen one that has masterworks, so I can't personally dive into the details on that. You know, just what I've read is, you know, you do certain things for that weapon and it, you know, it tracks kills or it tracks, you know, certain things. You might get a different look for it, uh, might get an upgrade. I'm not entirely sure on the masterworks system, but it is out there. I just haven't been a part of it yet, unless that helmet counts as a masterworks thing. I don't think it does. I think it's just, you know, an ar armor ornament, as they're calling them. So the other things that are noteworthy is uh, there are two new strikes, um, a, a Garden World and Tree of Probabilities. I haven't done either of them yet. Um, I just haven't gotten lucky with the strike rotation, haven't hit them. But uh, there are two new strikes, although I did hear that one of them is a rehashed uh, story mission, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, speaking of rehash things, uh, the new exotic items, I heard that every exotic, apparently, that has been added is a weapon from D1. Personally, I don't care at all. I think that that's fine. You know, it's new to this game, so I don't care. Yeah, I might have used it in D1 back in the day, but, you know, a new weapon is a new weapon. As long as it has a new look, that's cool. What's not cool is when you play a story mission in Curse of Osiris and it turns out it's just a pure Meridian Strike. That's not cool. Like, come on. They literally just had you run it backwards. So, bit of a bummer there. Heroic Strikes. Those are in the game now, which is definitely a nice thing. You can come over here, jump into either your regular strike, your Nightfall Strike, which we all know about, and then Heroic Strikes which uh, apparently are more difficult than regular strikes. I mean, recommended power 270, this is 140. But when I ran the four that I've run so far, they didn't seem really much harder. There wasn't modifiers on them or anything. So like, it seemed just kind of like maybe a slightly tougher strike, but it definitely wasn't difficult. You know, I knocked out those four without any wipes, um, without anyone leaving or anything silly like that. So pretty easy still in my opinion, especially if you're of the light level. And then public events. Nope, already touched that on Mercury. There are two new PvP maps. I haven't played on either of them yet. I'm hoping to hit one of them today. Um, although I guess I should clarify, I only have the chance of hitting one of them today. Unfortunately, PlayStation got an exclusive map. Uh, I don't remember if it's Wormhaven or Pacifica. I want to say it's Wormhaven. Um, but apparently it's a PlayStation exclusive, so thanks Bungie. Really appreciate that, us Xbox players and PC players. Just... You know, love that kind of stuff. So keep giving it to us. So as you can tell, I'm probably sounding a bit torn about this DLC. Personally, it was definitely underwhelming. Um, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of content to it. 
you know, I like that they're stepping in the direction of having, you know, interesting, you know, unlockables for the weapons and armor. You know, they're uh, expanding on the mod economy. So if I were to go to Banshee 44 right now, I could pick specifically what kind of mod I want. They rotate every day and they cost a certain amount of legendary shards and glimmer, I believe, in order to purchase. So, like, I went and I just got a, uh, you know, kinetic mod for this right off the bat because he was selling it that day. Boom, 306, you know, stuff like that. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, the other things you can go to, you know, it's not just Banshee. So for the uh, events like Faction Rally and uh, Iron Banner, you're supposed to be able to buy specific pieces with tokens instead of having to grind and hope to get it with a loot box. Um, an engram, I guess I should say. So, I mean, they've definitely made it easier to target exactly what you want. So that's definitely a good thing. Uh, you can see that in, you know, in Banshee 44, and it will be with uh, those event vendors as well. There was one other thing. Uh, Master Rahul, over at the uh, tower, you can actually just straight up buy uh, legendary engrams from him. <clears throat> I don't remember exactly how much they cost. I want to say that they cost 100. 100 legendary shards to get an engram. I'm not sure if that's right. I, I, that sounds high to me. I don't think that that's right. But you can just straight up buy an engram from him. And, uh, you know, it's a purple. For me, when I did it, it was a 300. You know, I was 305 at the time. So I don't know if it's always going to be based off your max light or what. But, uh, you know, that's a good way to just try and farm a few things. Unfortunately, you know, it, it hit me. The second that I went and uh, bought one, it, I literally got something that I just unlocked, like, and, you know, it was just a duplicate, you know, I'd gotten a duplicate and an engram that he decrypted for me, and then I bought one from him, and it was the same thing, it was like, god damn it, really, this is how it's gonna be, maybe, maybe not, maybe I got unlucky, but most likely I didn't, it's probably uh, gonna be a thing, getting all those duplicates from him. So it looks like I have to go talk to uh, Soraya here, I don't know why, don't have anything to turn into her but I think I will just rock it on down real quick check out the tower um, I guess I probably should have just done it off the bat to show you guys Banshee and Rahul also of course Eververse has been fully restocked there is a ton of new items in Eververse new emotes new sparrows new ships uh, new ghosts a new armor set it's not the the armor set that we were having in season one um, what was it called? I don't think I have any of it on my hero here. Let's look at my uh, Ishtar Commander real quick. Let's see if I can remember what it is. Optimacy. Yeah, the Optimacy set. Um, at least for uh, Hunter, that's what it was called. So they have a new armor set. One big bummer, one thing that people really <clears throat> are complaining about is that 90% of the new content is behind Eververse, which, you know, is ridiculous. I mean, getting to level 25, you know, beating the campaign in four hours, I was able to knock out five illuminated engrams there at, uh, at Tess. Don't get too but just the fact that things Eververse are, you know, most of the things are stuck behind this is really a bummer. Uh, let's see, can I preview what's in these? Yes. So, I mean, there's some cool new ships. Uh, I did see, yeah, see this thing. You know, that's definitely unique. Really cool. I, I really like that. This one is unique too. Unique, unique too. Actually, no, it's not. It's just kind of got an ornament, so to say. You know, it's, it's that standard ship that many of us have seen. But I did get this vehicle, I believe. Yeah, Curse of Foresight is pretty neat. Definitely a nice new uh, sparrow that you can get. Looks pretty wicked. Haven't tried any uh, skins on it yet. This one too. So they're definitely going for that more angular type sparrow with this new set. They have a new sweeping emote. Pay homage to the sweeper bot. You can take selfies now. So I mean, the Eververse stuff is pretty sweet. You know, there's, there's definitely cool stuff that I like in here. But you know, it's a bummer that it's it's stuck here. Oh, 
Oh, you can see all the ships. There was another ship that I saw that was definitely something weird that I hadn't seen before. It might have been that. I don't know. Anyway, that's Tess. Let's, uh, Thank you for let's move along us. here. Show you Rahul. Your return honors me, Guardian. So you can straight up buy an engram now. It's 25. Okay, that's much more reasonable than three or than 100. But yeah, 25 legendary shards, not a big dent. You know, you can try and get something Guardian. nice out of that. Like I, I said, I only tried the one time. And if you go to Banshee here, you can see that you can buy specific mods, which is definitely really nice. You do need mod components for it, so you gotta uh, dismantle a couple of those mods that you don't want in order to get them. You know, these cost only two. It's just a random weapon mod, random armor mod. That's the same as before. But now you can spend five mods in order to get a specific thing that you want. Like I said, those kinetic mods were, were up on day one of launch, so I grabbed a couple of those. But these are going to rotate daily, otherwise this is the same system as before. Still have a lot of gunsmith materials to turn in, probably should do that. Um, I really thought that they were going to have a uh, bigger purpose, but unfortunately it doesn't seem like they do. Now let's just go talk to... Uh, what's her face? Hawthorne over here. And then we'll jump into a crucible match. Hopefully, I have a good fight. Because um, I'm definitely not going to talk about all this stuff again in my next episode. What do you need? a lot of chatter about your clan. Thank you. Crucible Engram. Okay. Take care of yourself, okay? Nature of the Beast. Which I apparently went straight to the postmaster. Too funny? I think he was One thing that they really need to do is expand the fucking vault space. It has been such a bummer not having room in there. Guess I'll hold on to this just for something to uh, dismantle. But none of this you want to talk sticks to out for me to wanting to upgrade. But yeah, I can't believe that they still haven't upgraded the vault space. You know, when people complain about, uh, just change this, you know, it has to be so easy, just change this. You know, I, I understand the dev point of view. Um, I'm not a game developer, but I am a developer, and, you know, simple changes that you think, like, what the hell, this should take five seconds, you know, this should be one line of code or whatever. It's rarely ever that simple, ever. But something like Vault Space, I have to kind of think that it just might be, you know, it's, it's nothing too crazy. I would think to expand vault space by, you know, X amount of slots. It just just doesn't seem like it's something that crazy. Um let's see. Nature of the beast, a hand cannon. Can I put anything in my vault? Is it gonna let me? Let's see. Any of these energy items. What would I want to get rid of? I still want to try this scout rifle, I haven't yet. Eulogy SI4, I probably, I don't know, I wonder how it compares to Last Hope. I don't have Last Hope on this character. Let's see if I can put away Graviton Lance, because it's something that I literally never use. Aha, it let me. Alright, new hand cannon. So this one doesn't have any masterworks on it either. Have made it harder to I wonder get how it ship. compares to, you know, things down like down Better Devils. Oh dear. High Impact. They Not have the uh, detonation on Impact. Good handling. What is this? High Impact. Decent stability. Handling's a little so-so. Uh, precision kills create that elemental damage explosion. Eververse is just right. a title. It's a family philosophy. So, okay, on that note, let's go ahead and jump into Crucible. Like I said, hopefully I just wind up having a good match for your Monday episode. If it's a shit show and we get, you know, blasted down, then I apologize, but that's how it goes. So for this fight, I'm going to be using Nameless Midnight, you know, my standard scout rifle. I love this gun. Um... That's a new weapon too, living memory. But I love Nameless Midnight, gonna keep rolling with that. But Positive Outlook, this thing is a beast. I, I mentioned that, you know, you should pick this if uh, you know, once you come across that that uh 
you know, that mission reward, it literally is better than Uriel's. And Uriel's has been, you know, the fan favorite for a while. I personally like the number over Uriel's, but Uriel's is arguably the best gun, the best auto rifle in the game. Until Positive Outlook came around, it literally is just, you know, better. Like, it has better handling, the range stability and reload speed are definitely neg negligible. Um, same rate of fire, recoil's good, uh, and then you have kill clip. So, you know, that initial trigger pull accuracy is nice with your reels, but having kill clip I think is beautiful, and just the way that it feels in general is pretty nice. Alright, was there anything else that I wanted to mention? Oh, I should probably switch, though, since I am playing on Crucible. I'm gonna bring out Knucklehead Radar and put this away. Don't need Orpheus Rig for this. And I'm gonna go back to my Gunslinger loadout. So one thing that people were definitely pissed about, aside from the content being a little bit lackluster, being behind paywalls, and uh, you know, pretty short as a whole, is check this out. This achievement right here, the Prestige. You can no longer get this achievement if you are only playing the base game. Yep, you heard me right. That is something that is honestly laughable. I can't believe that they did something like that. But you can't get that achievement anymore if you only have the base game. Because the Prestige raid has had its light level upped. Um, I don't exactly remember what level it is, but it's higher than 305. And unfortunately that is something that is not attainable by people with the base game. So, a lot of people have been uh, requesting refunds to Microsoft, to Bungie, and have been getting, uh, you know, getting getting their money back for the game for Destiny, a game that they've been playing this whole time, due to um, you know not being able to actually complete it. They literally took content out. You literally can't 100% the game anymore due to the DLC, which is ridiculous. Supremacy. It really is. Defeat your opponent and take their crest. All right, let's see what we can do here. Just doing some good old supremacy. So as far as my review for Osiris, I mean, this wasn't meant to be a review. It was meant to be, you know, enlightenment, you know, showing you guys what's what, what's what's new. Oh, God, don't even get me started on that gun. But basically, this this expansion definitely failed, in my opinion. I would give it a solid four. Oh, damn it. I'd give it a four, honestly. Maybe a five. I think that the new stuff is cool. I think that Mercury is nice, but it's just too small. You know? I like the idea of Masterworks and the armor ornaments, but the campaign, it took me four hours. Four hours. No, that's nothing. Then there's this gun that you can see people using. This thing is an absolute beast of a weapon. It literally kills you in about a second and a half if they have you, you know, on target. It is ridiculous. I think it's called... Ah, uh, shit. I can't remember what it's called. And I'm dead. Prometheus Lens. There you go. So if you have that, definitely take it to PvP because it is unbelievably broken. It is just so strong. So I mean, personally, I had, uh, at least I got him. Jesus. <clears throat> so when I got Destiny, I got a, you know, higher edition. I forget exactly what it was called, you know, deluxe edition or whatever. Um, but so I paid extra for the game, and that included expansion one and two. So I didn't have to pay for Curse of Osiris, but for it being twenty dollars, I mean it's not bad for twenty dollars. I think people people with gaming are starting to value their money a bit more than they used to. Um, that being said, content has definitely been stripped a lot as far as you know what we're used to getting for sixty dollar games. You know that is definitely true. But at the same time, I think for the amount of content in this, $20 isn't bad. But would I have bought it if I didn't already have it? 
That I can't say for sure, and I, and I really can't recommend it for people that... Really? I was still close enough? I really can't recommend it for people that, you know, have to pay the 20 bucks. I think maybe people need to start waiting until Expansion 2, and then hop back in. You know, people wanted a lot of quality of life changes, people wanted, you know, things added to the end game, and, you know, more purpose to mods. And unfortunately, that is not what they gave us. But at the same time, this expansion was undoubtedly uh, built alongside the base game. Expansion 2, maybe not. That's, I think, when we can start looking forward to more quality of life changes, some of those things that we really wanted to see, you know, from Bungie and the live team. So hopefully in that next expansion, we start getting some, some answers and some good content that we actually really wanted to play. God, yeah. Uh, and I couldn't even get the crest, of course, because that gun is ridiculous. I'm talking too much. I'm at the bottom of the board. We're getting shit on 27 to 42. I don't know what it is with with Destiny for me lately. I can't win games anymore. God, that gun is just so stupid. And it's like, do I blame these people for using it? Not at all. Like, it's not their fault that they got an OP as fuck gun. But the thing is just ridiculous. Back off! There we go. That was a nice little triple for me. But yeah, we'll see if uh, Bungie drops the ban hammer, or uh, the nerf hammer, I should say, Three onto Prometheus Lens. Although I did hear that it's amazing in PvE as well, so people are really worried that, you know, it's gonna... It's gonna be nerfed for PvE as well, instead of just for PvP. Um, that's probably the case. It sucks, but that's probably just how it's gonna be. And I know people want PvP and PvE balanced separately, but, you know, it's just not that easy a lot of the time. Alright, we've actually got a tight game here now, so I'm going to try and really focus up. Let's get this crest. Meleeed. Get out of my face. That was nice. But I got people on me right here. Is how you grow strong. Your enemy is pushing for victory. Punish right. them for it. We That's just took the lead. The lead is yours. Supremacy can flip flop so quickly, it's crazy. Now you're fighting with heart, Guardian. Double down. Nice. Got a double. Exquisite. Your allies can't do this alone. Alright. That might hand us the win. Just one more kill, baby. Alright. Got that win. Good stuff. Can't believe we pulled that comeback out. You won today, but respect your opponent. And I wound up getting second place.